Hey everyone, how you doing today? In our Who Am I journal with uh, the one that has the lap book journal combination series we've been working on, I want to do a page in the center of one of my signatures. I have chosen the third signature um, just because I don't think I have quite as much finished in this part of the book and I'm trying to keep it so that I don't end up with everything in the front and nothing in the back because I am trying to keep this journal slightly condensed because of the box that it's going to be held in in the lap book. So that's a little bit confining. So anyhow, I have this fern. This is a piece of the beetroot dyed paper. And I used my fern stencil after I had dipped the paper in the beetroot juice. <laughs> I pulled it out and laid it on the stencil to dry, and that's how I got this image. I have gone to my pizza box that has all these scraps that I've been hoarding, and I found these. Um, it's some handmade paper. Now, I'm not real impressed with the color of this paper. It's not quite the right green for my journal, but I thought, let's dress it up a little bit. Let's see if we can't make it work. So that's the first part that we're going to be working on. We'll put the journal aside. I'll bring my papers out here. And we are going to use the inks that we have used in that journal, which are the Distress Ink Worn Lipstick, Distress Ink Peeled Paint, Distress Ink Brushed Corduroy. We're going to start with the peeled paint. I like to apply the ink directly to an acrylic block. I just like the look, the effect that it gives you when you put it on the paper. So I'm going to take my ink, squish it onto my acrylic block, and spritz it with water. And then I'm going to take this directly to these pieces of handmade paper and put some green on. Already, I'm seeing a difference in how these papers look. I don't think that it has really toned down that green that was on these paper papers to begin with, but I'm not done yet. So let's keep working and see what we can come up with. I do like this look. If it was, um, if it was going to be in a different journal, or something, I probably would quit right there. I'm thinking, okay, that's that's really pretty. <laughs> but that's not the look I want for this journal. So let's take some of the worn lipstick and apply that to our acrylic block. Spritz it with some water and use it as watercolor. So I have my brush and I'm just going to pick up some of this color and color... Um, Color inside the raised parts, I guess. Paint inside the raised parts. So that gets some of the pink that's on our paper in our journal and starts to pull this all together. And it doesn't take much. We don't want it to be perfect. We just want to get some color on here. We want it to be satisfying. So we want to make sure that even though we're not being worrying about being perfect, we are... Um, making sure that it that is at our liking. And then this one, we need a little bit more water here. And put this on here. And again, I'm really liking the way this is, is turning out, but it's still not hiding that original green that I was not impressed with and putting in, in this journal. So, but the more we get on here, of the colors that are in the journal that we do like, I think the better off we're going to be. So that gets enough of the pink, I believe. And again, it's, that's really pretty just the way it is. I have just a little bit more ink on my block. I'm just gonna squish it onto the paper. Didn't even matter where it went, just as long as it was squished on. So the next thing I'm gonna do is the brushed corduroy. And spritz that. And just put that in with the pink, maybe over top of some of this green. See if it takes this color any better. Yeah, 
And I'm not so sure that it really is, but it might be toning it down just a little. That is a very dominant green, whatever they have used when they made this paper. Um, it, it certainly isn't, isn't um, conducive to painting over top of. But again, I'm not disliking this. I want a little more brushed corduroy on there. I'm wondering, I'm thinking maybe the recessed parts of this, I will put in some of this brushed corduroy, like these areas right in here. Let's put a little bit of brown in there. Oh, this is some awesome handmade paper. When, um, oh, before I moved out here where I am and before I closed my shop, um, we would get a bus and a bunch of people from my shop, we would take a road trip and go out to a paper warehouse. And in that warehouse, they had lots of handmade papers, and this was just one of them. Okay, I'm liking that. Even though it's got that green, it really doesn't match. Um, maybe if we add a little more peeled paint. And of course, maybe we are not going to get that covered. So maybe we need to just say this is good enough, right? Keep trying to overcome that green that's on there. <laughs> we have enough of um, like the pink. And let's put this on our page here. Let me use up the rest of the ink that I have out. Put this on our page and see what we think about it. See if we're going to use it or not. Or maybe we could save it for another project if we don't use it. So those are very pretty. Let's put them on our page and see what we think. So we have our page. And of course it has the beetroot color, which um, matches the worn lipstick when we put the worn lipstick in the dye with our fabric that we dyed. So, laying these on top of here, um, I don't dislike it. I actually do like it. We could take some of this paper, which was my cleanup paper, which ends up being a mixed media paper, and lay that underneath. Really isn't wide enough to show. We could do something like this. I have another piece too. Put this one over here. And this one over here. So we have it just as another layer underneath, breaks it up, brings more of what we have in the journal into it. And then we have, I had some strips of some paper that I had coffee stained and then just did some crazy stitching on. And maybe if we add that across the top, It's all looking better and better as we break it up a little. I'm thinking maybe some lace. Let me cut, cut a couple strips of lace here for us. On top of there and there. And then I have this lace out too that would be pretty. I don't think it was wide enough on its own, but to be added as an extra layer, it would be pretty. Okay, so if I were choosing papers, um, because this is dominant, I wonder if Gesso would stick to it. 
I wonder if it offends me that much that I need to try to cover it with some gesso. It's pretty. Okay, here we go, girls. Me not trying to make up my mind. Do I want to try something more? Why not, right? Let's try something more. Let's try putting some gesso and see if that sticks to this paper. I will have to dry these, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Not completely dry, they're, they're dry enough. Um, this is some really absorbent paper. It's kind of like a really extra thick paper towel. <laughs> it's very absorbent. Anyhow, I'm going to take some gesso and just hit these spots with that green color that I don't really care for. Well, I can't say I don't care for it, just not in this book. And actually, we're going to like this even better, probably. Again, I'm just trying to hit the, the high spots, the embossed spots with my gesso. So comparing one to the other, um, I think I like the gesso better. So if you don't succeed, first you don't succeed, try, try again. And always remember, guys, it's just a piece of paper. If it gets ruined, it gets ruined. It's not the end of the world. Um, I think I only have one more piece of this paper, which is probably why I've been hoarding it, was I was saving it for a special project. Well, my Who Am I journal is a special project, so why not use it up, right? So that looks pretty cool. Now I'm thinking I'm going to dry this and then go back over it with a peeled paint and see how well it sticks to the gesso on top of this paper. Normally it would it would it would cover on on gesso, but we're dealing with different kinds of paper and that always has an effect on the outcome of all the projects too. So I, I keep adding more. I need to quit because at one point I'm going to say, oh, you went too far. Have you ever done that, guys? Have you ever just kept adding and adding and adding and then you wished, well, I wished I would have stopped like five minutes ago. <laughs> I'm quitting right there. And I'm going to dry that and I'll be back. All right. I see now when I look at this, the peeled paint. I don't see that green that was not a match. So... Let me put this in my journal again and decide if we want to leave it the way it is or if we want to try adding more peeled paint to it and see what we think. To me, this, this is not a bad match at all. No, it's not. So what do you think, guys? Leave it alone or add more green? I think I am happy with this. I think I got rid of the green that I didn't like. When I look at it now, I see peeled paint, and I think that that is the indication to stop. I got the effect that I wanted. Now let's put this pocket together. So to put the pocket together, of course, we're just going to glue the three sides to it. And let me just make sure we're here. And I'm going to use my tacky glue because this paint is dimensional or this paper is dimensional and I like the glue to get down in the crevices and it makes it hold a little bit better. So first off we need to take our mixed media paper here and strip rip that down to size and take our brushed corduroy and ink up the edges of it. I find my little so we'll ink up the edges real quick. And this paper, again, I have used throughout the journal in different places. So there, let's glue that piece down first. And I'm using the Turbo Tacky Glue from Aline's, getting right along the edge.
And then on top of that, we're going to center our piece yeah, of handmade paper, not made by me, purchased handmade paper. Again, I just do three sides. So technically, we have a pocket behind this pocket. I'm not so sure that we would be able to get to it. Um, it all depends on how thick all of our layers and everything are. If my book wasn't, my paper wasn't already in my book, I would have stitched this on the sewing machine and make sure it doesn't come apart. Okay, so on the other side, we have another piece of this same paper. We need to trim it down. And glue it. Oh, I think I like that side better. Yes. Ink it up. And if you're not aware of what this paper is by now, it is my paper that I have down on my desk when I'm working that catches all the inks and drips. Then when it gets just so dirty um, to the point where I think, okay, it's ready to be turned into some mixed media paper, then I will take it and I will add gesso, stenciling, stamping, um, whatever I feel it needs to make it usable in whatever project that I'll be working on. And that's what it is has happened here. It has made this real pretty paper to be used in this journal. Okay, so we have that. We'll take our piece of handmade paper. And I'm gonna put that as the edge here and glue that on so it's about the same height as the other one. Now I do have like um, another piece of this which is right here that I'll use somewhere else in the journal so that this isn't the only place I've used this paper. I'll have to remember how I colored it so I'll have to go back while I'm it's fresh in my mind here before I'm done this afternoon and um, color that up so that it matches because we know we like it and we want to use it. All right now we have some of this stitched paper and I'll put that on right here. Again, go around the edges. I usually tear all my edges, but with this um, machine stitch, you can't tear that without kind of ruining it. So I'll put that just down below because I did tear the edge of this handmade paper and it's frayed nicely and I wanna see that. So I'll put this down just a little bit below that. And I'm not gonna worry about trying to make a tuck spot or a pocket or anything out of this little piece. I'm just gonna glue it completely down like so, just a little bit below that paper. And um, I thought I had another piece, yes I do. I'm gonna put that over here. This one I'm gonna have to cut because it's stitched and, nope, it's not stitched right there, just the holes are there. I must have ran out of thread maybe, which is why it probably became a scrap. So we'll put that there. And glue that down. Trying to keep it lined up with the paper on the other side. Actually, do think we can get it both pockets. Okay, and then let's add our lace to that. And I'm going to use Fabric Fusion for that. And let's trim up our lace a little bit here. We'll be able to see that stitching underneath this lace. Let me see, where do I want to put it? I'm going to put it right down below. I want to put it right above, right on top of it. I think I want to see some of that stitching. I'm going to put it Put my glue line right across the center of that. And a little bit more right across the top of that. 
to hold this other piece of um, lace on. After that dries, it'll be easier to cut, so I'll cut that later. There, I'm very happy with the way that turned out. Let's get our lace for over here. Again, we're gonna go halfway across this strip of paper. Let's see, does our lace need trimmed? Our lace needs trimmed. Put that right there. A little bit more glue for our other piece of lace. Which is right here. And again, I'll let that dry before I try trimming it. Now, um, I'm going to make our tags and our paper to go down inside. And then I want to figure out um, maybe a word or something more, some sort of uh, centerpiece, um, piece that'll pull your eye in. So we'll set this aside. Let that all dry. And I have these two tags. Uh, I found them in Hobby Lobby. And we're going to ink these up with the same inks that we used actually on our um, handmade paper. So we'll start with a worn lipstick and some water. That's a lot of worn lipstick. <laughs> This is called kissing them. You put them together, squeeze it all, and you pull them apart and you get a mirrored effect. Pretty cool. Let me dry that. Um, actually, I'm also going to, ah, I was going to put, and I've totally forgot, I was going to put some um, Rolodex cards on the top of those, and it's too late now. So maybe I'll just use them as tags. So let's ink them up. I got all involved in, in getting that paper so that it looked the right color for me that, yeah. <laughs> so now I'm gonna dry these so that I can put the worn lipstick on the back side. All right, they are somewhat dry. Now I'm going to take the peeled paint and add the peeled paint in the same way that I did with the worn lipstick and I did do front and back and then I'm going to dry those and I'll be back again. Now for our last color which is the brushed corduroy I want to drip that on. So I put my ink on my acrylic block and I'm just going to drip it on. And I'll dry that and do that to the other side and I will be back. You really never know um, what effect you're going to get when, when you start these. I mean, you have an idea what it's going to look like, but the paper has a mind of its own. So this paper on these tags that I bought at Hobby Lobby is a little heavier paper. And the way the ink reacted with each other, I think, is just beautiful. This paper, the Rolodex card, is not so heavy. And so I didn't get the dark circles around my colors like I did on the heavier paper. It's all good. It's just, it's different. It's a little different. I'm going to take a little bit of gesso and just um, kind of blend these all together a little bit here and there. Um, I call it the dreamy look. I like the dreamy look. I'm not going to cover all of it up. I just want to do a little bit here and there. I think that just makes it look a little bit better. Not that there's anything wrong with this, and there's nothing wrong with this. I like this better.
I also like using my fingers better. I have more control over how much paint and where it goes than what I do with using either a brush or uh, old credit card. Um, of course, when we're doing bigger areas, it's kind of time consuming to use your fingers. Like it's faster with a brayer and a brush, and, but then you lose some of the control too. And I kind of like to control my art. I need to learn how to be more random and, and loose with it. Sometimes I, I'm a little too precise and a little too controlling. I wonder if that's true with my whole life or just my art. Hmm, something to consider, right? I will take now my brushed corduroy and I will ink up the edges of all of these. Okay, so that's finished. I will now take my stitch stamp with my brushed corduroy and put just a little bit of stamping on these, front and back. Now one side of each of these is going to be for journaling. The other side will be for decorating. But we are going to, this script stamp does not hinder um, the journaling avail. Uh, possibilities it's it's so light that uh yeah your 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 pen whatever pen you choose will will be able to go right over top of that there those are pretty much the same steps i do when i'm doing anything in this journal on all of my papers this is what we end up having our papers that look like this so that's the tags, and this is the Rolodex file paper. And it's all cohesive. So um, we're going to do a little bit of collage on each one, just on one side, because we, like I say, the other side's gonna be for journaling. So for these papers, we can add scraps of papers that we've used in our journal and I don't need a whole lot these tags are pretty I don't want to hide it all so I'll just pick out some scraps to add on and then add uh, I think a word probably something from my porch prints is probably what I'll use so we have some of that and we have these pieces of lace that we trimmed off that can go on here. What else do we have? Some of the weathered textured papers was used in, in the journal. So I have scraps of them and I'll put some of them on. Although it's pretty pink, they don't really show up. If I do the edges, ink up the edges, it'll show up. This one has a little bit of green. This one even has a little bit of purple. So that will definitely show up. And this one has even more purple. Doing them all the same. How about a little bit of coffee stained paper for something neutral. I like that. I'm not saying that's exactly how these are going to go, but it's the idea. So I need like a couple more pieces of lace. We can even do some bigger ones here and here. And actually I do want a bigger one for here and here. I'll save these for some little cluster. We need a piece, which paper did I miss here? I missed some of my cleanup paper. And let's see, what else do we need? We need a word. Let me go see what I can find. 
I love these definitions by My Porch Prints. I like the ones with the rose. So let's do a creative one. And they come in different sizes. And I like these little ones, especially for these tags. So we'll just cut these out. A creative. Um, we did love on our last one. Let's do a family. On our last page we did in our journal, we, we did a love page. Again, with My Porch Prince label. So we have family and creative. I think on the bigger two, I want to find a rose. Also on our last project, I did roses. So I'm going to find a butterfly this time, I believe. There's a pretty butterfly, and we don't want them to be the same one. There's a pretty butterfly. So we're going to do butterflies. All right, looks like I have some inking to do and I will ink it, I will glue it down and then I'll be back and you can see um, the finished project. All right, so those are complete. We have our Rolodex file tags. There's the creative one and the family one. And then we have our tags that I bought from Hobby Lobby. There is a butterfly on that one and a butterfly going the other direction on that one. Now for the these two, I'm going to add an eyelet to the top, but I'm not going to with these two. So I will take time here and add a gold eyelet. So I knew the time was coming that I would run out of gold eyelets and I only had one, so I put silver on these. They're not gonna be in matching with everything else in the book. So, um, I'm not sure what we'll do about that, if anything. I have some of this fabric strips that we've been using in the book, and I'm going to use that for my for my trim inside my eyelet. There's the other. I'm also thinking that since there isn't any gold on these, I probably should splatter some. So I'm going to mix up some of my... Dr. Phil Martin's Iridescent Calligraphy Copper Plate Gold 11R. And I will add that, a little bit of that, with some water. And to do this, I'm going to use my fan brush. And then I'll just tap some gold on there. And I'll do the same thing to the Rolodex one. There. And we have some gold on there. Can you see it? Okay, so we'll set those aside to dry. And I have two pieces of uh, coffee stained copy paper. I am going to do the same effect as I did to my cards with my three different colors. Um, and then I'll be back all right, so I'm going to change things up a little bit. I did the what I said with the inks. I applied the three inks the same as I did before, only instead of using my finger, because it's a bigger surface, I'm going to use my brayer. And I have a smaller brayer. I'm going to use the smaller brayer, this one here. And I'm going to take some of my gesso with my palette knife and just put it on a scrap piece of paper and pick the gesso up from there with my brayer to roll across my papers. And as you can see, it is a totally different effect that you get by using a brayer than what you do by using your fingers. It's not a bad effect, I'm, it's just different. To some degree, you can control how much you put on your brayer but not completely. So I like that. I think that's nice. I'm going to do it to the back side. Okay, so there are my pages with the gesso. I have not stamped on them yet with my script stamp, and I'll do that with my brushed corduroy. Okay, so now we have some pretty paper. Let's um, let's strip some gold splatters on it. We got some big ones because my lid wasn't completely on and now I have a mess. <laughs> I'm 
not quite sure what to do with these big drops that I don't like. Kind of. Guess that's not so bad. I could have maybe sprayed them with water and blew them around, but that's not going to be on all of them. <laughs> I don't think. Unless we get some more big splatters. We're on a big splatter roll, it looks like. Let me see if I have a scrap piece of paper here that maybe I could. I'm really disappointed in that. That's what happens, guys. Sometimes we have mistakes. We'll let that go. It is what it is, guys. Let's just do that to all of it. All right, turn that over. Let's see what kind of mess we can make on the back sides of them. Okay, that's more of what I wanted on the other side. We do have a few that are a little big. We may as well get the same effect on this side as we did on the other side. It just won't be as bad. There. I'm going to dry that, and then we'll do something across the top for a header. <laughs> As it ends up, I really don't mind those big splatters at all. So let's see what we want to do across the top. I think we will just make, I'm trying to decide which one's going to be the front. I think we'll just make a little cluster up in the corner. So for the cluster, we should have some of the weathered textures paper that's throughout our journal, right? And that might be too big of a cluster. Let's try that instead. That might be big enough. Let's get some something neutral underneath that. And I think we need to have some dictionary print. Of course, we'll ink up the edges of them. A little piece of lace on each. Maybe a piece of fabric. Okay, so now I need like a focal point for my two pockets and for here. So I'm going to go see what I can come up with and I'll be back. All right, so I have found for here a tag from My Porch Prints and also from My Porch Prints these little labels. And I'm going to add that to this collage here, this little uh, snippet. So I will ink this all up. Now, I want to be sure that this is going to fit into my journal page and that what I'm planning for the top isn't too big. So generally, I fold my papers in thirds. Let me take a practice one. So I have the same size piece of paper. I'm going to fold it in thirds and see how it fits inside our journal page, our little pocket. Okay, as I was afraid, it's too tall. So let's fold it in half. And if we fold it in half again, it's too wide. So let's fold it in half and then in thirds. And then it'll fit down in our pocket. Um, not liking that at all. So, um... I could trim down our paper so I could still do the thirds. And in the height, I could take off Oh, it's catching on the, the back. There we go. So I need to take off approximately this much in order for it to fit nice. And then I can fold my paper in thirds. So we want to trim down this edge. Let me go do that on both of those and I'll be right back. There, now we have two strips we can use somewhere that are already made for us. Let's take our book now, our journal now, 
and our paper. And if we fold it in thirds, or approximately thereabout, Then it should, let's see, so this is the side, this is the side we'll have our snippet on, and it fits down in there perfectly. So we can put our snippet on the top right section, making sure that it's not too big. I'm afraid some of these papers are like too big, it's going to be too big of an element for a snippet on the top of our page. Let's go with that, with that. We can do the fabric or skip the fabric. Um, we're adding this label, or so we thought. Um, I still wanna add the label, or the tag. So if we do it like that, and like that, then we can put our little label like that. And that can be our snippet for the top of our page. Yes. And that'll, that'll fit into our journal nicely. So let's get all that glued down. All right. So that takes care of our stationery that we have made for our Who Am I journal. And this folds up into thirds like this. And we have our upper right corner all decorated nicely with a snippet and the same with this and it'll go right down in our pockets that we made in our journal one in each it matches our pocket perfectly all that bad green is pretty well gone you don't even notice it Now, what I have decided for a centerpiece, a focal point on our pockets are um, some tea cards. These tea cards are from Junk Journal Studio on Etsy. I'm using the brown tone one, and I think I'm gonna add this, this tulip. I'm not sure whether these are lilies of the valley or what they are but they're cute so we're going to add those too and I decided to go with the brown instead of the bright co brightly colored was because I didn't want to go and change up what we have going here I really like these colors and I really don't want to spoil it and I think the brown stands out quite nicely so let's glue these down with some tacky glue and this is going to complete our little pockets our pocket page in our center of our third signature in our Who Am I journal. Now there's the lace I said I would snip off and I can do that now, the overhang that we had. And then we have, here we go guys. I hope you have enjoyed this process video and got some inspiration out of it. And we shall see you again soon. You have a great day. Bye now.